Thank you. Hey, it's Fisk Capone in the morning. Daniel Turner is a conservative, conservative activist and the founder and executive director of Power the Future. This is a 501c4, which aims to protect America's energy workers. Daniel, welcome. Thanks for waiting, man. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's nice to have you here. Thank you. Hey, wait, you're from Queens? You're a I Queens am. guy. Born and raised in Queens, New York. Plaza College, right there in Queens, man. You know, Plaza College is great. Huh? Absolutely. It's a great school there. So thanks for coming. Tell us about what you're doing. As, as, as First of all, you're a young conservative, mm-hmm. so which is always, to me, interesting. Young is appreciated, <laughs> so thank you. I'll take young. 44. Oh, uh, no, please. Ah, you're, oh, you're a spring chicken. It's great. Now, what what is the uh, uh, power of the future? What, tell us about that. So, I started this organization less than a year ago when I realized in the uh, in the green movement, all the green activists you see, there was a lot of inauthenticity, a lot of lies, and you would see these protests. It really came out of Keystone Pipeline protests yep. and Dakota Access, and I would see these people go um, with their signs and banging on drums and chaining themselves to equipment, all claiming they were native Lakota. And you'd realize after doing a little bit of research, wait, this girl's from Jersey, yeah, and yeah. she's 19 years old. Um, someone is funding this. Someone is behind it. And what bothered me was that when these green activists, quote unquote, win, they all go back home, they all go back to state college, or they go back to Jersey. Yeah. But the men and women who live in that community, whose jobs are now gone, what do they do? What happens to them? What happens to their industry? And so I started this organization to advocate for them. That was well, that good for you? How did, now this was this an impetus by someone that you knew in the energy industry by chance? Or? No, this was this was an impetus of seeing this sort of inauthenticity of this of this activism of these green activists who are all just phony. Yeah, you know what? All of that is phony, in my opinion, mm-hmm. including the caravan that's coming up. It's all some kind of concerted effort. I don't know what I don't know who, what it benefits, but when they say climate change, for mm-hmm. example. And then I see it uh, freezing. To, like th- This is going to be the coldest Thanksgiving ever. 31 degrees as a high tomorrow or Thursday on Thanksgiving. How could they say climate change? And oh, by the way, and I have to tell you, Daniel, and I, I know you'll probably give us this at least. Some you got to clean up the air, otherwise you end up like China, and everybody's wearing a mask. So I understand when you could do "quote unquote" clean coal, and you could at least attempt to do some of those things. But they're getting carried away with this whole thing, correct? Absolutely, and 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 I think it is a it is a uh, an action of the left to create this binary that it's either you're for the earth or you're for "quote unquote" big oil, right? They always frame it at that way. And, and that's a false choice. We can have both. We can have a robust energy environment. Look at the amount of electricity in this room alone, right? We, we need a robust energy industry, and we can have clean water and clean air. And this, to have this idea that it's either or is just false. I know. And now Jerry Brown is saying that the uh, fires in California are due in part to climate change. Does that make sense to you? Everything can be the, con- attributed to climate change when you wanted to. And, and again, we can have a clean air and clean, and we should have clean air and clean water mm. but when you when you say that everything is the, the cause of climate change you also wear this mantle of noble goals of, of, of morality that gives them the superior ground and so green activists like Tom Steyer and Mike Bloomberg our former mayor here they go into these rural communities with millions of dollars and choose who their senators are and who their congressmen are and they all do it in the name of quote-unquote climate change and, and that gives them permission to have this this big blanket that no one else is able to have. I saw, I was watching Mark Levin over the weekend on Fox, and he was he had someone on, I'm embarrassed, I should remember the guy's name, he was a noted professor, and he says it's a whole myth. Climate change is a complete myth, that the facts just don't hold up. Is that the way you feel as well? That's the way I feel, and, and I'm, every scientist or every person can find scientists to, to agree with their opinion. Um, I use it a little bit more specifically to say the, the men and women who lead the climate change religion, because it is sort of a religion, In their personal lives, they Mm. never live what they want government to mandate the rest of us live. So Michael Bloomberg, God love him. I don't begrudge him his wealth. I hope to be worth $54 billion one day. Working in a nonprofit is probably not the way to go, right? (laughs) But he's worth millions of dollars. He has 14 homes around the world. He flies on private jets. But he's going to tell us to cut our carbon footprint. So when he starts using a llama to travel the country, then I will consider him to be a real prophet of climate change. Tell us about the coal miners, man, because I feel for the coal miners in West Virginia. 
you know, and the and the president has been so such a big proponent of that. Uh, can you see a future for coal miners in America ten or fifteen years from now? I, I think we can reverse the trends. The Department of Labor has has put out um, uh, numbers to say that about four or five thousand coal miners have come back to work since President Trump has been in office. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. The war on coal was artificial. Um, people people say, well, it was because of natural gas was cheap. Natural gas was made cheap because the Obama administration made coal expensive. So people found another source. Mm -hmm. But the war on coal was manufactured, and, and all President Trump had to do was take away these regulations that the Obama EPA put on this industry for political purposes. Now, you need some of those regulations, or some of those, if they're going to leak something into a, a creek and everything, you can going because down the shore, this is, listen, I, I agree with what you're saying, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a complete hoax, especially when Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez starts. It's green, 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 green. They have nothing else. Mm -hmm. They have nothing else. And then this is what they're saying. Although, on the other hand, I have to admit, down the shore in Jersey, I've said this before in the air, the, the, the ocean in the 70s was horrible. Yeah. They used to dump garbage. New York's garbage was dumped off the Jersey coast, and we would see it wash up on the shore, brother. <laughs> and I wrote jokes about it, man. <laughs> You know, so now there was a problem there. So they pulled that back. So I guess there's got to be a happy medium here somewhere. Absolutely. And and industry should be responsible for, for protecting the environment. They shouldn't pollute. They should be held accountable when they do. Yeah. And we in America have made such tremendous uh, growth when it comes to cleaning up our earth. Like you mentioned, the Jersey Shore. People talk about Pittsburgh growing up in the 70s, how you yep. can swipe the, the, the windshield yep. and take yep. the coal dust yep. off, the, off the glass. We are going in the right direction. Why doesn't the left? ever celebrate that instead you know what they do they ban straws because china is throwing plastic in the ocean in the pacific 95 percent of the pollution in the pacific comes from southeast asia but seattle and orange county say well we're not going to allow plastic how is this how is this uh, just yeah, yeah, proportionate yeah, yeah. to what is actually happening and hop on your private jet you're upset that's <laughs> you, you, they never have an answer for that do no. they I want one of those private jets. I want to. I want to leave my carbon imprint, man, on my <laughs> private jet. Where can learn? Uh, where can we learn more about Power the Future? Powerthefuture.com, and we're just here to support the men and women who work in this industry, whose jobs are always threatened because of people like Mike Bloomberg, people like Tom Steyer, and their millions and billions of dollars. They work in an industry that these people don't like politically, and someone has to advocate for them. All right, Daniel Turner. Hey, keep up the great work, man. Good to see you, Daniel. Thanks Thank for you coming so much. in, brother. Come, thanks for coming in live, my friend. And I give everybody my best back in Queens, New York, my friend. Daniel Turner right there, Piscopo in the morning, 751. Debbie's out there on the road.